Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and uh, well, today we're celebrating 10,000 subscribers, which is actually crazy. I actually can't believe that, that we actually have made 10,000. Uh, thank you guys so much, new and old. If you're new, welcome aboard, and for me old guard, thank you guys so much for your continued support. Um, I didn't think we'd ever get here. Um... This is actually pretty crazy. Now in the ranks of 10,000 plus. That's crazy. That is actually crazy. So anyway, today I'm going to do a little little retrospective. We're going to go back through the years. Uh, maybe if you're a new, newer subscriber, you might not have seen some of this. Yeah, where we've come from and where we are now. 10,000 subscribers. Blimey. Okay, so let's... Rewind all the way back to the summer of 2018 where I did the Klingon Bird of Prey size controversy. I'm going to be frank. Don't watch it. It's, it's got 26k views now, but um, it's, it's a hard one to get through. I did not have the editing prowess that I have now frustrating one to get through so I so I'm given to understand uh, the article is very good if you check out the article on ex Scientia if you haven't already uh, um, my views on the Klingon Bird of Prey's eyes controversy those haven't changed at all but yeah I mean this was the first video that really picked up a big viewership I can't remember what the numbers were um, off the top of my head maybe I'll go have a look at me analytics it got more views than anything else on my channel. That wasn't saying much, like, if you go back and look, boy, yeah, there's some cringy stuff here. There's, a, I mean, cringy. There's just some old stuff here. It was like I just made videos for the sake of it. And then I did the How Powerful Is The Romulan uh, D. Duradex. That didn't get huge amounts. That got a little bit of trickle over from uh, the Klingon Bird of Prey video. And that was mostly inspired by a post I've made on the Trek Yards community page and basically and actually a lot of my thoughts in that video are still pretty relevant to how I perceive it uh, in the content I make today and why I make the decisions I do um, so let's go so anyway let's fast forward further through the summer of 2018 we come so I was actually on holiday when I decided to write Wings of Romulus uh, literally just on holiday in France, decided, yeah, I'm going to do Wings of the Red Star, but in Star Trek, I'm going to do it with Romulans. And really, I didn't expect anything from it. I just was going to do it for the fun of doing it. Um, and I chose the the Kirchan class because it was something that I had seen around a lot. It was a pretty prolific ship in the community. And uh, I thought, you know, no one else has done a video breaking it down, so... Yeah, I'll give it a look, and, uh, well, what we got was Wings of Romulus. Which I still stand by today as one of my favourites. Romulans have always been my favourite aliens in Star Trek and Wings of Romulus, I think you can tell. I'm just absolutely indulging myself. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to make. So we had the Kirchan class, then we had the Praetor Reborn. That didn't get so many views and I partially chalked that up to the fact that it's a 30 minute video. It was a monster and I'll tell you, it was... Yeah, I learned a lot about myself in that editing process. <laughs> I learned my limits. Saying that, um, so actually with those, and actually all the episodes subsequent to that, uh, I was actually writing them uh, while travelling up to university. I travelled up on the train. I would often worry about falling asleep on the train and missing the stop. So I would write to keep myself awake. And yeah, so, and that's partially why it's so blinking long, because I just wrote and wrote and wrote and had to fill in like a large chunk of Romulan history. Again, it's... I still really have a soft spot for that video, 
It's, again, I'm really indulging myself. I'm really enjoying myself with it. And, you know, the Diduridex is my favourite. When it came to writing the Val d'Or, pretty popular and still pretty popular. Obviously, the most popular episode of Wings of Romulus remains the Kerchan class, which is pretty crazy. I like to think that, you know, I've helped raise, at least I hope I've helped raise its profile in the community a bit. Then let's fast forward to, um, oh boy, that time when Star Trek Discovery came out. I did a video called Star Trek Discovery Reconciled where I basically uh, scale corrected Star Trek Discovery because we ended up with the Discovery Enterprise. So I was like, okay, if we scale that back down and we can scale down all the other Discovery ships. I mean, that, that was just interesting because that feeds into Wings of Kalos, which I then did, which was a natural continuation of Wings of Romulus. It was a very different writing style and it was very refreshing. Um, much more emphasis on myth and story and narrative and I really actually enjoy it even though it's sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit. But it was probably my first real taste of controversy because I tried to reconcile discovery into it and a lot of people took exception to that. Um, I think some people, particularly in the Bird of Prey episode, realised that I was doing it in a very tongue-in-cheek way. Um, and frankly, I actually like the D7 they finally made, the proper one, in Season 2 of Discovery. I liked it. It was a nice update. Uh, there's other problems I have with Discovery's Klingons. They, they made the right choice. They got it right eventually. Just needed a bit of poking, as with most things these days. In the summer of 2019, I passed a thousand subscribers. Now, it was actually quite funny because two of the requisites for YouTube monetization are a thousand subscribers and like over 400 watch hours. I'm guessing for most channels, they get the subscribers first and then the watch time. I had it the other way around. I had like easily way in excess of 400 hours of watch time. Like, because that, by that point, um, it was in April that Wings of Romulus particularly just blew up. April of 2019 just absolutely went through the roof. Really incredible. So I had passed the watch hours easily. I just still didn't have the subscribers. So I'm, when it finally made a thousand subscribers, and then I was a bit worried because I was running out of content ideas. And you can see that in that video. I'm like, give me some ideas here, guys. I'm, I'm struggling. Uh, I don't have many left. But anyway, I then went and made the uh, Romulan Bird of Prey video, which did pretty well. It was always, I was always going to set it up like that because I, um, I wanted to kind of do a compare and contrast of uh, Romulan Bird of Prey and the Klingon Bird of Prey and their history so that's why those videos are kind of paired together almost um but then again so then after that i was kind of at a loose end uh, I, I i i will admit i was a bit of a loose end so then i went and made the reman scimitar and that was not popular that absolutely bombed um that was also because my uniforms video bombed I still stand by the video and i stand by my use as El of eldar as stand-ins for romulan ground troops because what else is there? Um, anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, so then, yeah, I came up with the idea for Battle Space. I did a community poll, I, and basically I put up the poll and I said, okay, I'm going to do this series looking at battles and wars in Star Trek lore. Which one do you want me to start with? And the overwhelming majority was for the Romula War, with the second place being the Cardassian War. So that's what I went and I did. It's worth pointing out that at this point, there was no Romulan War movie. They had talked about it and it was in, in the works, but there had the part one hadn't even been released. So like I was I wasn't deliberately preempting them. I was more like, I'm just impatient. And you know. So yeah, I went and did the Romulan Earth War for Battle Space, and well, I think it speaks for itself. So I did the Battle of Berengaria. That took off pretty much immediately. I knew I was into something there, and really with that series, I kind of 
try to merge as much as possible the books as well as uh, a bit of Starfleet Museum, mostly to fill out the Romulan ranks. Because again, the uh, the Romulan ships that were used in the uh, the Romulan War fan film didn't exist yet. The only one I had seen was his um, Stormbird, which frankly I didn't agree with. In any case, um, yeah, we had uh, the Romulan Earth War, and that was... Well, it's an immensely successful series. My most popular video is the Battle of Cheron. That was a really ambitious series and a lot of fun to make. Uh, again, really indulging myself with the Romulans. Really, really enjoyed that. And it kind of, yeah, catapulted me to um, front and centre. Because, you know, no one was doing it. It's still the same basic idea as Wings of Romulus. It's in the style of a Discovery Channel documentary hugely successful incredibly successful and had a lot of fun making it um it wasn't long before i decided to pick up with the cardassian border war the cardassian border war is an interesting series it's one that really occupies a real soft spot partially because i had there's a lot of head cannon there's a lot of my own ideas into there because frankly there isn't much of anything else um I, again, I like to think that I have done a lot to raise the profile, and I'm still working to raise the profile of it and the ships that I feature in it, particularly the Cadassian ones. The other thing that I like about it is that, well, the Romulan Earth War was a pretty black and white series in terms of, you know, here are the here are the bad guy, mustache twirling Romulans who want to kill humanity and take over the Alpha Quadrant. It's perfectly adequate. But what I liked about the Cadassian Border War was the freedom I had to make it grey. In fact, I was actually kind of worried about making it grey. I was actually kind of really worried about uh, Starfleet Under Siege. That's a very... Because that episode covers a lot of uncomfortable ground. Going back, I did a rewatch of the series, and um, it's just a great narrative and story, I think, and ties... I think it makes sense with the the Starfleet that we see at the start of TNG. It, It... feels like a very natural portrayal of it, and most people seem to agree. A series that has really bred a lot of discussion about other historical instances. Uh, In the middle of making that, I also did the Cardassian-Klingon War, uh, the Klingon-Cardassian War, the Battle of Sector 73 Epsilon, which if you still don't know, (laughs) which some people, like, still apparently haven't realised what it is I'm basing it off of, it's 73 Easting, uh, it because I watched a documentary on it and I was like, that's incredible. And you can see my, it's pretty blatant parallels. It's like, yeah, the Klingons are the Americans and the Cardassians are the Iraqis. And actually, that's something I have in a lot of my content. Well, basically, it's like, because that's what I know. That's growing up what I've known in terms of what the, the world's actually about. And of course, other people think it's uh, different. But yeah, that's my view on it. Um, that was just, a, and that was a balls to the wall battle, and that was just me, you know, flexing my muscles. And I was also trying to see, again, what I was going to do for the Dominion War. And um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It didn't do hugely well, but it was also just a little bit of a break for me, just so I could take a break from the Cardassian Border War story, mull through some of the ideas that I was uh, playing with uh, before finally you know, committing them to screen. Uh, and this was just a nice way of just having some action. And it's a it's a really fun episode. Uh, very intense action from the get-go. Um, and then, then in June last year, I made 5,000 subscribers. And yeah, I, in that video, I set out a load of plans that I have for the channel. Some that I've carried out, some that I haven't. <laughs> Um, and after that, I tried doing the Imperial Academy, and that has gone, well, nowhere. A lot of people have said I should do Star Wars content, and, you know, you can even see in the titles of Battle Space. My plan originally with Battle Space was to do multi-franchise. However, the way the YouTube algorithm is working right now is, like, if you try to branch out, it will just slap it down. It's like, no way. You stay in your lane, mister... So, I mean, there's a lot of other channels that I would recommend. If you like what I was doing in Imperial Academy, uh, check out the Star Wars Imperial Historian. He's actually, he 
really great. It's basically what Imperial Academy would have been, and frankly, he does it a lot better than I do. So, there you go. We'll pick up on the Cardassian Border War. Probably my favourite episode the Battle of the Badlands, and that was well because uh, at the, around this time, I got in contact with Rizal 3D, uh, the incredible, incredible artist. She actually had just watched um, the uh, Wings of Romulus, the Kirchan class, and she had actually made a comic inspired by Wings of Romulus, which was awesome. And you absolutely check it out. I'll link link to it in the description and comments and all of that. And yeah, part of the thing I was thinking, part of the thing with the Cardassian Border War was like I'm using such obscure ships, particularly the the Echo, which I love, I adore. Um, and there was just like no 3D pictures of it. So she went. And she made these incredible, and they are incredible 3D models. And, like, the production value in the Battle of the Badlands is just, like, it's another level. It Again, it's a much more action-y episode, and it's a lot of fun. It's probably... It's probably the best of the series uh, in terms of how much fun and how much action and excitement it is and how good it looks and how good those renders and those ships look. And that's all thanks to her. Incredible artist. Incredible work. So, yeah, then I took a bit of... Well, yeah, frankly, over the summer, I took a bit of a break. I also wanted some more renders for uh, the the finale of the Cardassian Border War. So that led to it being uh, delayed a lot. Uh, But finally came out with The Price of Peace. Again, very good. I mucked up the audio, which caused it to uh, get re-uploaded and... It's okay now, but it took some time to um, get where it's meant to be. At that point, I also started doing ship chat, which is a lot of fun, and people seem to really enjoy that. I was really looking to come out with something a bit more structured for my conversational videos, my more relaxed, you know, generalized discussion videos, because, like, they were pretty hit or miss. And ship chat was just a way to get that into a good formula, and it's still it's still fun, and I just love the thumbnails that I came up with, especially like the constellation. That's just there's some glorious thumbnails out there for ship chat. I uh, just absolutely love it. The thick saucer, it's great. Um, so then after that, um, Rizal 3D was starting work on the Hutet 3D model, which I was really excited for. That was going to take some time, and that was that was what I wanted to kick off the Dominion War with. So in the meantime, I decided to uh, basically really do do the natural continuation after the Cardassian Border War, because basically I could use the same assets. Um, and I went and did Wolf Three Five Nine. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and again, I really flexed my creative muscles because we don't know the actual you know what actually happens in the battle. So I, you know, basically said what I thought would happen in the battle, and I think that's partially why I was able to make the Borg so scary, because it's like, you know, okay, would the Borg actually, you know, do all the things I showed them doing? No, they would just go bam, 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 bam. That wouldn't have been as scary as them using tractor beams, maneuvering ships, playing with physics. That's just, like, you know, terrifying. That I regarded as my alien. Uh, and then I did Wings of the Federation, assimilate this. That that was just natural. I was going to be using these ships in the Dominion War, and I was going to do a Sector 001. So that was all pretty natural, and assimilate this, I got a huge viewership into October and November of 2020. Really incredible numbers. Yeah, they were they were just nice, nice series and a nice bit of horror style content especially with so with sector 001 that's almost more to set up anything i do with the borg 8472 which i do plan on doing probably ne- probably next october um so then we begin the dominion war and we began with hunting the hutet with that absolutely 
gorgeous Hutet 3D model by Ry by Ryzel 3D. It's an absolutely beautiful 3D model. Hunting the Hutet was, uh, in terms of writing, it was, you know, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do Hunt for the Bismarck, and, you know, I think a lot of people got it. With a lot of this Dominion War stuff, I knew it was going to be big, and it, it was nice to just still focus on individual ships because in other episodes it's going to be these huge scale battles and then you know here we are focusing on just one ship um and it being the center of the story absolutely incredible visuals in this episode then that brings us to raptor's revenge this was an episode much like the battle of sector 73 epsilon this was one i had wanted to make pretty much since the inception of battle space because basically my philosophy has always been the philosophy of this channel has always kind of been what did we not see you know the ships we don't see uh you know the stories we don't see and again with battle space the battles we don't see and raptor's revenge was absolutely you know because we hear so much about the romulans joining the war but we never see it at all and so here was my chance. And again, absolutely indulge myself as a Romulan fan. It's one of my... It's 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 really great. And it's, it's fun watching it because, again, actually, as I was making the frames of the battles, and you can see the size because I scaled the ships to their actual size. So those Romulan warbirds just absolutely eat the screen. And I'm like, I get why they scaled them down for Deep Space Nine. I don't agree with it because I think it was um, would have been cooler to have them giant. But I get why. But it's it's an awesome episode, and I'm going to be following it up, bringing it up to the most recent, the Battle of Tyra, which was again um, pretty natural. And there was also a few other uh, videos that have been done on the Battle of Tyra. Uh, Omniply had done his. A very old video, but it had been very influential uh, to me personally. And that's where really we stand now is 10,000 subscribers and um, a lot of very successful episodes. So I guess you guys want to hear what's the future? What's next? So obviously, continuing the Dominion War, the, if, if in terms of what's the next imminent video, what's coming this month, I'm actually going to take a break from the Dominion War. I'm going to do a Wings of the Federation, looking at the Excelsior class. It's going to be really interesting. You're not going to want to miss that one. So that's going to be this month. And then in future, I'm going to continue the Dominion War. So I've got lots of other episodes, including the Klingon Front, which will start with the Siege of Arcadia. There's the Siege of Vulcan, the Battle of Beta Z, the Battle of Benzar. There's going to be some more Romulan episodes, including uh, the Battle of the Giants. All sorts of ideas. A lot of ideas and a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, other ideas I've got. A Klingon Orion series. So it's going to be a sort of a historical, again, historical documentary series. Looking at the decline and eventual fall of the Orion Syndicate in the 22nd century. Uh, in tandem with the rise of the Klingon Empire. It's going to be, it's very much inspired by The Last Kingdom. And, you know, so it's going to be, the Klingons are going to be very Viking-y, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And because there's, there's so many cool ships from that era, actually. I'm hoping to cooperate with, with Rise L3D on that. That will be a very, hopefully a very striking series when I uh, make it. I'll probably, I'm thinking of doing it over the summer. Uh, other ideas include, um, I still want to do a video on the Romulan Nova class. I need a 3D model to do that, and I, yeah, need to get my priorities sorted on that. I'm also hoping to do some collaborations. I've also got um, a kind of a horror idea planned, sort of a set of audio logs um, for the Borg Dominion War from the perspective of, like, a Romulan station commander. Very, a very alien isolation-esque. Um, so that, that's another set of ideas that I've got sort of churning away in my head so yeah plenty of ideas and uh plenty of creativity uh this has been a really incredible journey and i'm looking forward to uh continuing it with you guys so uh until the next time and i will see you guys in the next video